Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to paint zombies. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to today's video. So like I said in the intro today, I'm going to be showing you a way that I've found to paint zombies that's really quick and easy, but still keeps them looking good out on the table and keeps that gritty and dirty zombie look that we're after. So from painting plenty of zombies in the past, there's two main, not so much challenges, but just things that we need to be conscious of when painting zombies. And the first is that the more clean and precise that you try and be with your brushwork, more like how you would be if you're painting the survivors, the more that we actually take away from that gritty and dirty zombie look that we're going for because they end up looking, well, too clean. And so we need a way to be able to paint zombies that lets us be a little bit imprecise. And the other thing is that typically in zombie games you end up with lots of minis which is awesome because it means that you're able to have a really good size hoard out on the table but the more time that you spend on each individual mini the longer that it's going to take the whole entire process and so we also need a way that's going to keep the time down but also still let us paint to a high enough standard that the minis still look good out on the table. And so the way that I'm going to show you to paint zombies today lets us be a bit imprecise with our brushwork. It's really quick and easy, but they still look really, really good out on the table. And to show you this way, I'm going to be using zombies from Zombicide 2nd Edition. So let's kick it off by priming our minis. Alright, so our starting point is to do a zenithal prime, so we're going to be hitting the minis with black all over and then grey from a fairly high angle, and then we'll finish by hitting them with white from directly above. And this is going to give the impression that they're being hit with light from directly above, as though they're standing outside under the sun or inside with lights in the ceiling above. And the reason that we're taking the time to do this Zenithal Prime is because we're not going to be base coating with acrylics like we normally do, we're going to be base coating with washes. And the reason for that is because unlike acrylics, with the washes being very, very thin, they're not actually going to cover up the prime, they're just going to tint at the colour that the wash is, but allow all of the different tones to come through. And so what that means is that anywhere where the wash goes down over an area of the prime that's white, it's going to appear much, much lighter than anywhere that it goes over some of the black prime that's still coming through. And the big advantage of this is that it means that we get to completely skip the entire highlighting and shading process because anywhere that the black is still showing through, it'll look like that part of the mini is in shadow and anywhere that it goes over the white, it'll look as though that part of the mini is being hit by light. And the other big advantage with base coating with washes is that it is just so much faster to lay down your base coats than what it is with acrylics because when painting with acrylics, you need to thin them down, do your coats over a couple of thin layers so that you keep it nice and smooth. With the washes though, typically one coat is enough and it is super, super fast to lay down. The only thing that you need to be mindful of is that the wash isn't pulling anywhere too much that you don't want it to. In this case here, you can see I just needed to clean up a little bit just around where the skin meets the dressing gown there, just because it did pull a little bit there. Other than that though, it is super, super fast to lay down. When using some of my brown washes like Agrax Earthshade or the Seraphim Sepia, I did need to do maybe two or three coats with them just because the colour is quite light. It did take a couple of coats to build the opacity enough so that that colour could be seen. But other than that, pretty well a single coat in most cases did the job. And so you can see here just from painting the skin so far the effect that the washes give. So up around the head and the upper arm that's sort of pointing up there, you can see that it's quite light. But then the legs, especially her right leg that's in shadow underneath the dressing gown, it's already much, much darker. And so we're getting that impression as though the minis are being hit with light from directly above. But we haven't had to spend one single second doing any actual highlighting or shading. And so this is a massive, massive time save when you have a large number of minis to do. And so now you can see we've moved from the skin onto the clothing and I'm still just using washes to base coat these because we've still got some of the black, grey and white all showing in the clothing and so we'll get that free highlighting and shading here too. The washes also just naturally give that darker and grittier look that we're going for with the zombies and so they work perfectly for the clothing because it gives that dark and gritty look as well. 
what I do here is, I, as you can see, I'm trying to vary the colors a little bit that I use just so that when they're out on the table, it doesn't look like there's a bunch of zombie clones out there that have all been given the exact same clothing. And so you can see I started by using the purple and I grabbed one mini and I did her sort of like nighty kind of thing in purple. Then I grabbed another one and I did her dressing gown in purple. Then I swapped over to blue and then I grabbed another mini, did her nighty in blue. Then another one did her dressing gown in blue. And I'm just swapping through just by using different colors, just so that there are different com color combinations between each of them. And then just for the hair, I just grabbed black just so that it if I, I thought if I used brown for the hair, it would then sort of be a little bit too samey same between the skin tone and then this one here that's got the brown dressing gown, just the black was just a different color. And earlier I mentioned about how when I was painting with the browns, I needed to do some second coat so that the color came out a little bit more. That's what I was needing to do with this one here, the where I used the Agrax Earthshade for the nighty, and then for this dressing gown, I did need to go back and do a second coat just to bring the color out a little bit more. And then just to dirty up the clothes in general a bit more, I just used the Agrax Earthshade over all of the clothing just to darken them down a little bit and give that general impression that, you know, the zombie apocalypse has been going on for a while. These clothes have gotten dirty. Maybe they've had to crawl through some mud or something like that, just so that they don't look too clean. All right, so we're now just going to start painting the base. I'm using stone gray here because this matches the street color that's on the tiles in zombie side. If you're painting zombies from a different game, you'll obviously just be painting the base whatever color you need to. But I'm doing the base before doing any blood work because I'm going to be painting some blood spatters on the base to make it look like the zombies are either dripping blood on the ground or that they're leaving some footprints behind. Now my go-to paint product that I use is Blood for the Blood God from Citadel. You're obviously free to use whatever sort of blood product you normally use. But I think no matter what product it is that you use, you need to spend a little bit of time to build a realistic looking blood effect. Because if you just blob it on just in just random spots, you're not going to get that realistic look. So what I do, which I'm doing here at the moment, is I lay the Blood for the Blood God down where I want it to be at its thickest, and then I clean the bristles off, and then with no Blood for the Blood God left in the bristles, but having them a little bit damp, I then feather out the edges. And that just helps to thin it out, because say where the blood is on her face and then going down her chest, I'd imagine there that she's just, you know, freshly eaten some human survivor. There'll be lots of blood around her face and then immediately under her chest but then it's going to have soaked into the clothing and not be quite so thick out more around her shoulders and then down on her stomach. Same sort of thing up on her hand there. That's probably the part of the human that she was holding onto. So there'll be lots of blood on her hand, but then it will have dripped down her arm. And so on her, on her forearm, it's not quite so thick. But after I've spread it out, I then come back with more blood for the blood god and put a good thick bit where I imagine it would be at its thicker. So like on her hand there, I came back with another blob and put it, put it on her hand to show that that's probably where most of the blood was. And then it stripped down her arm. And this just gives a more realistic impression of blood or how blood would actually be on zombies rather than just doing just random thick blobs all over the place because in reality, it's not all going to be the same thickness. And then here, we're just putting a little bit down onto the bases. Here, I try and get a bit of variety from one base to the next just so that it looks like some of them are leaving a bit of a trail behind them. Others are walking through a puddle of blood that might have already been there. And so this is the last step in painting these zombies. As it'll just continue to go through, you'll see that from one zombie to another, I put the blood in different spots just to try and make it look as though they've been in some different sorts of situations. So I hope you've really enjoyed watching this process. I really, really like painting zombies. I find them lots of fun because you can get some good variety from one to the next, putting some blood on, getting them all nice and gory is lots of fun. And painting in this way is very, very quick and easy like I was saying earlier in the video. I reckon these zombies were probably 10 to 15 minutes each, and I reckon about five of those minutes is just the blood alone. So base coating very, very fast. You get to completely skip the entire highlighting and shading step because of the different tones from the prime coming through. 
And so it's just a fast and easy and fun way to work through a very, very large number of zombies. And here you can see some of the different ones that are in the box. And they look really, really good when they're next to each other, especially when they're out on the board. But that's going to do us for today. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. But until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.